G'day, it's Adam, VK4GHZ. Today we're going to take a look at the latest Nexion for the K3NG rotator controller update, the 29th of June 2021. And we're also going to catch up a little bit because there was a previous update that I didn't do a video about. That was the, uh, the 25th of May, that's right, 21st of May. So we're going to take a look at the features that were introduced in both these last updates. Stick around, that's coming up. All right, let's get into it. On the bench, we have a 3.2 inch connection, five inch connection and the three and a half inch connection. Uh, the Arduino code version I'm running on my rotator controller board here is the 24th of June, 2021. So Goody released that uh, last week. All right, now we're gonna play a bit of catch up here because I didn't uh, get to do a video for the last release, which was the 21st of May, 2021. So we'll just go over the features that were introduced then. Now a new page with that release is a clock page. Really, really handy if you're running a GPS in your system or you've got a, a real-time clock going. So you've got a nice, if you're not actually using the rotator as such, you've got a, a, a shack clock there. Now on the three and a half and the five inch, you can adjust all the colors to your own preference. Just simply touch the clock. The uh, Now the font previews, are, <laughs> the window is too small to show the large font. So yeah, you're gonna get that. So anyway, we can change fonts. You get a bit of a, a hint of what the font is. There's only two to select from. Uh, Calibri Bold or the uh, LCD look, the Digital 7 Mono. So say we want to make that, um, let's make that green. So we can uh, we can do that. Likewise over here, change the font, make that. Uh, let's go for white on, um, white on magenta. Doesn't that look disgusting? Likewise with the grid locator, you've got a choice of two fonts and we can change our colors to uh, our color combination. That's really disgusting. Like so. Now on the 3.2 inch, um, but there is no uh, ability to change your colors. They are um, coded in to the HMI. So if you want to change the colors to suit yourself, just open the 3.2 inch HMI in the Nexion editor. We'll have a quick look at that. We'll open our project. This is the uh, HMI for the 3.2. Just go to the clock page. That's it here. Left click on uh, V clock. There's a box there. You'll see the, the object name there. Now just so you can see what you're doing, over in the text box here, just type something in such as 23 colon, uh, 59 colon 59 and you can see uh, it just happens to be set to red at the moment so say hmm, no I don't like red let's make that uh, say yellow so PCO is your foreground color and BCO, BCO is your background color uh, likewise with the grid square down the bottom there we've got the V grid text box um, come across to text, type something in just so you can see what you're doing. For instance, my grid here is QG62 Lima Kilo. Say, nah, uh, grey on black, don't really like that. Oops, um, let's make that, um, say, grey and grey and red, whatever. So, easy to change. Save your file, compile it, then upload it to your Nexion screen. So the way you do that with the Nexion editor is via a, uh, a, an FTDI adapter or a USB to serial adapter, like so. Connects up to your Nexion and select the COM port, press upload. All right, another new feature. Now, the 3.2 misses out on this one. It's just meant to be a basic display, but on the three and a half, five and seven inch versions, if we go to our, oops, let's just go back there. If we go to our big gauges page, like that, you now have the ability to have a customized azimuth 
gauge background. Now the way to enable that is a long press and you'll see that pop up, a long press, like so. Now a short press in the middle will still allow you to enter a, enter a bearing, so um, let's send that to 145 degrees. Oh, <laughs> this connection is talking to the controller. So 145 degrees, off it goes, like so. Now not only do you have the ability to switch between the standard gauge back background and a custom gauge background, you have the ability to pre-select between one of two azimuth backgrounds. The way you do that is to go to the configuration page and you'll see a new button here on the 5 inch and 7 inch, you'll see the Alt AZ Gauge 1 button. That'll toggle that to Alt Azimuth Gauge 2. And up here we've got Alt AZ Gauge. You'll see that light up, that's number two. Don't know why I didn't add the, uh, the one and two on that anyway. So what we do now, we can go back to our big gauges page. Do the long press. And now we've got a, uh, an, an alternate version of our custom long press. So, you know, with, with two versions available, you could have one for, uh, say, HF, maybe you're into HFing, and you'll see the, uh, the great circle map of the world. Just let me show you that on the three and a half. And um, if you're into VHF and uh, microwaving and, and six metres, perhaps, where a, a, a closer in perspective is, uh, is more suitable. So you can toggle between, uh, between the two. So on the five inch there, you can see I've got the, the VHF orientated one. And on the three and a half inch, I've got this, um, the great circle map of the world. So if we want to go back to normal, oh, and that, it will remember that when you, um, you turn the display off. So it will come up with uh, what you last set. A couple of bug fixes on the uh, five and three and a half inch. Now on the big gauges page, there wasn't the ability to um, reset the screensaver if you uh, happen to have had that set. So what you can do now, pressing the uh, the top left, top left or top right of either gauge will, in fact, um, reset the screensaver. Now what I'll do, uh, we'll just set that for one minute. Screensaver one. Go back to the big. Gauges page. Now, in one minute's time, the uh, screensaver should kick in. There you go, screensaver just kicked in. Now, if we touch um, top left or top right of any of these gauges, either of these gauges, it should reset the screensaver as you can see just there. So that was a little bug that uh, has now been fixed. I'm just gonna turn my screensaver off, just back to zero, oops. The zero will disable the screensaver. Another small little bug that was fixed also relating to the screensaver was on the contesting page here where you've got your, um, your eight azimuth presets. This was on the three and a half inch only actually. Um, the, uh, the, there was some timer event code missing, that, so the, uh, the screensaver never, never kicked in. And I cannot remember how we reset that, so I'm just going to set that to one minute. We'll go back to the contest page. Coming up to one minute. There it is. Uh, Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, just by touching the um, the title bar up the top, that will reset the screensaver. Come on, give me a break. It was like a, a month or two ago that I um, I implemented that. Uh, so it will disable the screensaver. We'll just make that zero. Okay. All right. So um, a little bit of housekeeping with the uh, the twenty first of May update, but the the big feature was the uh, introducing the clock. 
and also having those, those two alternate azimuth gauge backgrounds. Moving right along, the latest release, the 29th of June 2021. Now again, this update will reset your EEPROM settings. So just make a note of any uh, presets and name tags and all that sort of stuff. Now on all the versions, there is a new page. Uh, which way to go? I can go forward or back. Let's go forward. There's our clock page. We have a new page here, which is just a nice big azimuth only gauge like that. So if you're not playing around with satellites or, or EME at the time, and nothing that involves uh, elevation, and you're just working terrestrial stuff, this page might be handy. So depending on the screen version you've got, like the five inch, you've got access to four of the presets, your, uh, your counterclock, clockwise controls, uh, controls uh, stop parking and go to functionality. Uh, no room for presets on the three and a half and it's a squeeze on the 3.2, but um, mo uh, it's pretty much the same as the, the three and a half. Now again, you have the ability to switch in a custom gauge background. So a long press there, and as you can see, we can switch back to normal, switch back to normal. Now that custom background on, on this page works in conjunction with the, the big gauges page. So uh, we can select our other alternate background. Let's go back to this one. which is the, uh, the worldwide one. So when you're customizing your images, you might want to, and just be aware the image slots that you put these custom images into are different for, uh, for each of these screens. So you might want to pair them up. So uh, your alternate background one, um, so like I have here is, is like the worldwide um, great circle map version for both, both of those pages and uh, image number two, alternate two, is, is, is the, um, the closer in VHF type uh, great circle map, just for consistency. Now that we have a big azimuth only page, you can make that your default startup screen if you like. So on the configuration page, we have a new button. 3.2 doesn't have this feature, but the seven, five and three and a half inches do. So you'll see the new button here, the big azimuth gauge. So your default startup screen, you can select between the numerals page, the big azimuth gauge page, the small elevation, uh, eleva uh, azimuth elevation gauges page, or the big azimuth elevation gauges page. So for instance, um, on the five inch here, I will uh, just turn the power off to that. And that starts up on our big azimuth elevation page. Let's change the config to go to the big azimuth only gauges page. We'll turn it off. There you go. It powers up on the big azimuth only page. So it's totally your choice. Now just be aware the buttons that you see on the screens in general uh, will be dependent on, uh, on what features you actually set. So if you don't have any elevation uh, functionality or features set, you're not gonna see the, uh, anything to do with elevation, for instance. So just keep that in mind. So that's the big change with, uh, with this release. Um, what else we got? The 3.2 inch has got touch points every 30 degrees. It, it's not talking to the controller, but trust me, every 30 degrees, you can uh, send it to that uh, direction. The 3.5 inch has touch points every 30 degrees. 120, there'll be one at 90, 60, so on. Now the five inch, because we've got a lot more room there to work with, this has got touch points every 15 degrees. So at zero, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, so on. Now when you, when you're doing that, just aim for the, um, the red marker 
or the um, around the the, the the dial to activate that. All right, so that's it. I hope you uh, enjoy this update. It's um, kind of running out of ideas to uh, what else to include. I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's all there. Um, if anyone's got any suggestions, uh, let us know on the Radio Artisan uh, IO group. But I think there's, a, there's functionality in all these different screen sizes that will, uh, will, will suit everyone, try and keep everyone happy. To download this Nexion firmware, simply go to my website, vk4ghz.com. Up the top, you'll see downloads. Click on that, close the ad, unless it really interests you. And click on the obvious here, VK4GHZ Nexion for K3NG Rotator Controller. That will take you to the project page. Some information there and uh, some Im images and all the packages, all the zip packages are here. So firstly, the 3.2 inch, the three and a half with previous versions for all of these, the five inch and down the bottom, the seven inch package there. Unzip the package that suits your screen size. Now remember, you do need an enhanced connection. It just won't work with a basic. Don't even think about it. Just uh, spend a few extra bucks and get a, uh, an in enhanced connection. There's two ways of programming these. You can program it via the Nexion editor uh, with the HM using the HMI and the, um, the uh, USB to serial adapter lead. Or you can use, if you don't want to modify the file, you're quite happy to use it as is. But remember, you do have the ability there to, um, to have customized azimuth uh, gauge backgrounds. There'll be a separate video on that. On, on We'll drill down a little bit more about that on a, in a separate video. But if you're quite happy to use it as is, um, you can uh, just copy the TFT file to a, uh, you may need to use an adapter here, copy the TFT file to a micro SD card, then you can just pop that in your connection, turn it off, power it on with the card already in, and it will go through the, um, the updating process. So two choices there. All right, guys, that's it for now. And if you like these types of videos, Please don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up and like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. Really appreciate that. Until next time, take care and we'll see you then.